it's been a week since Apple released the first beta of macOS Sonoma. I have some thoughts. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and as I said, it's been a week since Apple released the first developer preview of macOS Sonoma, the big new software update coming to the Mac. I wanted to go ahead and give you an initial review of the beta, not based on stability, but on the new features that Apple is presenting in this update, ahead of the full rollout later this year. So let's go ahead and talk about macOS Sonoma. I've been running macOS Sonoma on my M2 MacBook Air for the last week, and there's a lot of things that I really like about it. But before we get to the things that I really like, we have to talk about some of the biggest features that feel more like about time than anything groundbreaking. Seriously, some of the biggest features that Apple is touting for macOS Sonoma feel like kind of obvious things, even if Apple has done a good job in implementing them. For example, when you check out the Mac OS Sonoma preview page, one of the first things that Apple advertises is screensavers. Screensavers, yeah, and I mean, let's be real, these are just screensavers. Apple has done nice things, I mean, there's glorious slow motion footage, that just aerial footage from across California and landmarks around the world, and they look beautiful. I mean, I have been a big fan of the similar screensavers on Apple TV for years, and in fact, someone's already made a app that brings all of the Apple TV aerial and underwater screensavers to the Mac. So this is a feature that we kind of already had just using third-party applications for a while. Apple did add additional touches, like the fact that when you go ahead and log in, it switches from a screensaver to your desktop view, which looks really nice, and I love that. Uh, but it's just kind of like a small thing for this feature that's being touted that should have been around for a long time. Other features that feel obvious and should have been here already include shared passwords. You can share your stored passwords with friends and family, things that third-party password managers have implemented a while ago. We have faster and more accurate search and messages. Yeah, a feature of macOS Sonoma is that search works in messages. I'm grateful for it, I use it frequently, but it just feels like it should have been here. Finally, Apple has added widgets that can be placed on the desktop. Again, Apple's kind of been messing with widgets on the Mac for years. We had kind of the dedicated dashboard space, then we moved into like the side view, and, and now they can go on the desktop. This is nice, but not a flagship feature of Sonoma. Now, that being said, there's a lot that I really love about Sonoma, and I want to talk about some of my favorite new features. Hey, I got to interject for just a moment to thank our sponsor for this video, MacPaw, and clean my Mac X. It's time to keep an eye on your Mac's health. Junk files, malicious apps, and hung processes can slow down even the latest and most powerful Macs. Maintaining your Apple machine's health, whether old or new, is essential to smooth macOS performance. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one Mac maintenance tool that takes care of old junk, faulty apps, and malware in an efficient, aesthetically pleasing, and hassle-free way. Using the app's menu, you can monitor your Mac's health, CPU load, and more. With nearly 30 million downloads and 15 years of expertise, this app is a must-try for any Mac user. Run Clean My Mac X to gear up your Mac for the groundbreaking additions Apple has announced at this year's WWDC. As Apple continues to pack Macs with innovative new features, Clean My Mac X is here to ensure that your hardware is running at peak performance so that you can enjoy a seamless Mac OS experience. Exclusive to Apple Insider watchers, you can grab a 5% discount for Clean My Mac X down below in the description. Now, let's get back to that other coverage. First of my favorite new features is creating basically apps from web pages, kind of like fancy web apps for your Mac. Apple was pitching web apps as the version of the future on the iPhone originally, and now we have something similar here on the Mac. But honestly, it's really nice to take a website that you visit like a thousand times a day, maybe Apple Insider, if I had to guess, uh, but you can save that now as a dedicated kind of app on your Mac. It adds an app icon, it adds an interface, and you can just switch back and forth between your other applications. So it's technically still just running through the browser, but it can stand alone and exist as a proper application. 
and I love it. It's a really cool feature, and I'm going to be using this for a lot of things between YouTube Studio, uh, Apple Insider's publishing platform, and just reading the news on a few of the sites that I always end up switching back to. Apple's also bringing some much appreciated help to continuity camera on the Mac. Apple gives you now much more granular control to exactly how your picture looks. When you access continuity camera, you can see things like a preview of your image, you can control what lenses you're using, you of course have things like studio light and portrait mode, you have reactions, desk view, just a lot of stuff has been added to continuity camera to give you more control on how it's being used. Continuity camera has been one of my favorite features for macOS Ventura, and I'm really excited that Apple is going to continue to improve it and refine it with Sonoma. Then we've got improvements to gaming. Apple has created a new dedicated gaming mode for macOS. Now it doesn't just customize your notifications that come in, it does a bunch more. First, it gives like direct access to the GPU and CPU and prioritizes them over everything else in the stack. And essentially, it'll turn down background tasks to make sure that you're getting peak performance out of the CPU and GPU. So your games are going to run as high performance as they can. Then any peripherals that you have access, that you have connected, things like your gaming controller or your AirPods for audio, these will have new priority as well, meaning that they're going to have much more reduced latency than they did before. So you're going to get even more performance out of your controller or your AirPods, mind of which for some reason happen to be chirping. Continuing with gaming, we're seeing a bunch of new titles that are coming to the Mac for the first time. We had uh, No Man's Sky recently launched, Stray is launching, um, we have Death Stranding Director's Cut is launching, that was announced during the Apple event, uh, World, of Court, World of Warcraft Dragonfly is coming, and so many more. There's a ton of titles that are coming to the Mac that just previously skipped out on this platform. And Apple's making it easier to develop games for the Mac. There's a new porting kit that makes it really easy to move your game code from console or PC over to the Mac, and you can actually kind of preview it and see how well it'll run on the Mac before you go and do all of the major work. Things that used to take a lot of time have now been streamlined to take weeks rather than the months they would previously consume. Finally, Apple's adding the ability to view iPhone widgets on the Mac. Now, for some of you, this may mean nothing, right? It depends on what you're using widgets for. But for me, this was huge. One of the biggest widgets that I use on my iPhone is the Dexcom widget, where I can view my blood sugar in basically real time on my iPhone home screen. But now I can do that on my Mac. Any widget that you have on your iPhone can now show on your Mac's desktop. No matter the app that they are, if they have a widget for your phone, you can view them on your Mac, control them on your Mac, and it's very, very nice and a great way to blend the iPhone and the Mac together. And I honestly think that people are going to get more use out of this than they will out of some of the widgets directly on their iPhone. You can create those widgets even if you don't use them on your iPhone. Use them on your Mac instead and interface with your phone without ever having to pull your phone out of your pocket. Those are the biggest features that I'm excited about with macOS Sonoma, but there's a lot more to love, and these features are generally coming to all of Apple's platforms. We're going to see these things on macOS Sonoma, as well as on iPadOS, on tvOS, iPhone with iOS, and just basically the entire Apple ecosystem. Find My Items can now be shared with up to five different people, so that way someone else, like my wife, is able to find my AirPods, or find my keys, or I can find the TV remote that she added with one of her AirTags. Whatever it may be, AirTags can now be shared, as well as third-party Find My Enable items. For HomeKit users, there's now activity history that you can use to view the activity uh, and statuses for things like locks, garage doors, contact sensors, and security systems. Visual Lookup can get you recipes, so you can look at a picture of food and find a recipe that would similarly match it that it can look up from online. In Messages, sensitive photos can automatically be blurred before you even see them, and then you have a decision of whether or not you want to or don't want to actually view that image. You will no longer get unsolicited images that you do not want to view and be exposed to them before you have any say at the matter. Lockdown mode has been improved and now has come to the Mac. Notes can be linked with different notes and you can actually just scroll through multiple pages of a PDF directly in the note without having to open it up. And there's vastly improved autocorrect that, yes, will even correct your words to curse words if that's what you're intending. In summation, all of these put together a great update for the Mac, but I will say it's a lot less exciting than in years past. When your flagship feature is things like screensavers, and better search, they're not really that attention-grabbing. 
They, they're nice to have, but they're nothing super flashy. But let's be real. Mac OS Sonoma is going to be mostly polishing things up. It feels very stable even on beta 1. That's not saying go out and install it. It's just surprisingly how nice and great this operating system runs already. So I'm excited to see how it gets polished up, how much faster the Mac is going to be, how much of a better experience it's going to be overall, even if there's no big flashy standout features. I guess a lot of Apple's developers are busy with another new platform that'll be launching fairly soon. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. By the way, if you want to grab any of the new Macs, we've already started seeing some deals and discounts, and we've linked those down below in the description too. We'll see you guys next time.